Hi, today we're doing a how to do a setup, initial setup using the Sony FS7 camera. So of course the first thing you want to do is put the lens on and then make sure you leave the lens cap on. That's a little trick and uh, that will come in handy later. Then of course the next thing to do is you want to install your XQD cards in the back. That's pretty simple and straightforward process. Uh, those cards can hold up to, I think, almost an hour of 4K uh, footage. And then in the back, of course, you want to make sure you've got your fully charged batteries. We just use these standard batteries. This one is the largest one they have, and it, it's good for about three hours. Uh, some people put a V-mount battery on the back, but uh, we find that these batteries work just fine and um, don't add that much extra weight. We don't have to put a V-mount on the back either. And then the next thing, of course, is you want to turn the power on. And the power switch is kind of located in a kind of an unusual area. It's underneath the camera on the left side. And it seems a little flimsy. And there's no official power on light. But there is, if you have an SQD card, that will come on. So that's basically like your unofficial power light. And when uh, it's green... That means that it's okay to do a hot swap when it's red. It's either being red or it's writing, so you don't want to mess with it there. Sometimes uh, there's a hold switch on the side, and it might be on. If it is, the, you'll see the red. Um, you want to make sure that the hold switch is off. Now we got to jump into the menu here, and this is where we'll do, be doing most of our setup. We go into the system setting. The first thing we want to do is let me let me just show you one thing here is this APR. So sometimes when you turn on the camera the APR function will start automatically and if it does you should execute it but you can also execute it manually in the system section of the menu and then you want to go and check your uh, version uh, firmware version that you're using and of course the most current one is 4.2 and this is all in the system section of the menu which is the, in the the last menu and then the next thing you want to do is a system reset and the reason you want to do this is to make sure that all the settings are restored to their default setting. If you're using the camera for the first time or someone else has used it in, uh, before you, you have no idea what they may have changed. So this way you know that all the settings have been restored to their default. And once the reset works, you've got to turn the camera off and then turn it back on. When the camera comes back on, it's going to be in custom mode. It will not be in what's called Cine EI mode. Once the uh, system reset is done, you'll turn it on and you'll turn it back on. And that you'll see at that point that uh, if you look in the upper right that you're in standard 5, which is a gamma that's available only in uh, custom mode. So that'll let you know that you're actually in custom mode. Then you want to go back into system settings and you want to go to the hold switch setting. And you want to, uh, you got to scroll down to get to it. And you want to turn these settings to off. And what this allows you to do is, if you don't turn them off, you won't be able to hit. Re uh, you won't be able to turn record on uh, at all. So this setting allows you to at least record with the hold setting on, the hold function on. And then you want to go through, and of course, uh, you want to change the the language and uh, and the clock if you want to do that. And then you're done in this section of the menu. And then what you want to do is you want to look up here on the screen and make sure you don't have any auto settings on. If you do, they'll appear in this section of the screen. Here, if you press this button, that will turn the auto settings on. Um, if you press it again, it turns them all off. And again, you can tell if you have any auto settings on by simply looking at your viewfinder. You also want to turn your auto focus on, from auto to manual. You don't basically want any automatic settings on your camera. You want to be in control. You don't want the camera uh, deciding what it's going to do. It deciding on its own what it what it wants to do. Then what you do is you go into the user menu, and we just work our way down through these. Uh, you go through country, set it to either PAL or NTSC. Um, we're already in custom mode, but it is here if you wanted to shoot in Cine AI that you would change it. Um, you go in and you can select your format um, as well. Right under right underneath that. Um, so here we're looks like we're shooting in UHD, but let's say we want to shoot in high definition, then we uh, 1920 by 1080, we would change that here. And then we keep on going. Kodak, we always choose 
XABC IntraFrame. That's a very good codec to work with, and it's uh, it's easy to edit with, and it's very uh, good quality. The next thing you want to do is on the side of the camera, you got three buttons, and these are assignable buttons. By default, they're set to S and Q, Iris, and User Menu, but Buttons two and three, we recommend changing. So you go into assignable buttons, and let's see, we go down here to iris, and what we're going to do is set that to high, low key. And um, actually, that's a function that you would only use in Cine EI mode, but um, that is a good function to assign to that button. And then we go into button three and assign that to magnification times four and times eight. And this allows us to zoom in to sure that we're getting a really great focus and then we back out of there and then uh, once we're done with that we're going to go to uh, format our media we only have one XQD card in there but then we can go ahead and format our cards and make sure we got plenty of space to record on we always want to start out with clean formatted cards and um, back on the back on the side here we want to confirm our slot selection so I only have one card in here but if I had two I'd want to confirm here if I have, uh, well, I'm recording to card A or card B, and I'd press that slot select, and that would, that would change that for me. Next, uh, we go to user gamma, and by default, this is set to standard 5, which is the most common gamma of those standards. And standard 5 is really a what you see is what you get look. Uh, you could also set uh, hyper gammas in here if you wanted, and those are very good gammas as well. But for this, particular setup we're just staying with the standard five which is which is perfectly fine next we go into aperture which will improve the sharpness of our image we don't want to bump it up too much but somewhere between 0.15 point uh, plus 20 is good so that's where we'll set that and then we'll jump on down to peaking this is strictly a preference setting to assist with uh, focusing I prefer to leave it off but some people may prefer to have it on so that's an optional setting if you want to do focus peaking. The next one's kind of important. You want to go into your ISO gain. And you can set it to be whether it's dB or ISO. I actually prefer it to be set to ISO. And this is, um, basically we, we recommend always shooting at the lowest base ISO. So for standard, it's uh, 800. Uh, but you can set the medium here to 1,000 and high to 2,000. But generally we recommend always shooting at the lowest ISO so that you have the least amount of noise in your image. And that's a, that's just a, a quality thing. The next thing you do is knowing that we're shooting in standard 5, um, we'll be using a 90% white card uh, for exposure purposes. So then we go into our zebra setting and we want to, uh, of course, turn it on. And then we'll be using zebra setting 1, uh, not 2. So we got to turn, turn on our zebra first We'll be using Zebra 1, and then we set this to 90 uh, because a 90% white card needs to be exposed to 90 IRE. So um, we'll also set the aperture to about 3, um, which will give us a pretty narrow, uh, accurate um, range. So that'll actually be 3. It'd be from uh, uh, 88.5 to uh, 88.5 to 91.5 and uh, the range. And then what we do here is we go into shutter speed and we like to actually change this to angle and make sure it's at 180. And the next thing you can do is you can actually calibrate your monitor and you can do the color bars. Um, I won't be getting into how to calibrate your monitor exactly. It should, generally it's okay by default, uh, but that is an option for you to do here with the color bars. Uh, the next thing we do is we're going to go into the paint menu and we're going to set the the black level um, to negative negative three. So we go into black here, we go into master black, and we're going to take this down to negative three. You have to make extra turns on the dial to adjust this setting, so sometimes it seems like something's wrong, but nothing is wrong. And then the next thing we do is we go into white clip and we adjust that up to 109%, which is the the, the maximum. Uh, if you're shooting an S-log gamma curve, this is disabled by uh, default, so you can't adjust the white clip in S-log gamma. 
The next thing we do is go to the side of the camera and make sure for our audio that the, uh, the gain is set to manual. Again, we don't want the audio on any automatic settings. We want to be able to adjust that. And then we go into the audio input section of the menu. And let's say we're going to use the internal microphone, which is really not that good of a microphone to use, but just for test purposes, you can, you can use it. So you'd set the input, of course, to internal mic uh, on channel one and two, and then you turn on the wind filters, uh, put those both on. And then if you come down here um, to, con uh, to control um, to, the, to the channel levels, you want to set that to side. And what that means is that if you need to adjust the gain, you can just turn those dials on the side of the camera, which are very convenient to do. And that's all the settings we need to do for audio input. And then we go into audio output, and it's in here if you wanted to adjust your headphone, uh, the volume on your headphones, you have to go all the way into here to do that. So you can do that very simply. But there's no external way to adjust the headphone headphones. And then once you're done there, um, you're going to go into the viewfinder section, and you're going to go to the video signal monitor. you got to scroll down a little bit there. And uh, we're going to set that to waveform monitor. Of all the scopes that appear on the screen, that one's probably the most helpful. So that gives you an idea of where your 90% wide is showing. And then that's it for the internal settings on the camera. You're basically good to go. So what you do is you come back here to your, uh, your viewfinder display, and it's a good idea just to double check all your settings. And it has all the important settings on here. It's got uh, your shutter speed, uh, your, your frame rate, your ISO, your Kodak, your gamma curve, how much battery times remaining, and the, uh, the mode, that, the format that you're sh shooting in, which in this case is high definition. And actually we can even check our audio levels as well. So the viewfinder has basically all the information that you need uh, to double check. And then we're basically done. And so we can take the lens cap off and then we're going to put our lens hood on. That's extremely important to do. It can protect your lens from getting damaged or scratched. Uh, I never shoot without a lens hood on. I, I dropped a lens one time and if it hadn't been for the hood, the lens would have been absolutely destroyed. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is you want to double check that you've got your ISO switch on L. You've already checked it on the viewfinder, but it's just a good idea just to double check that you've got it on the lowest setting, as I mentioned before. And now you're basically, it's home stretch time. So here you're just going to get uh, your exposure. And so you get a 90% white card. And then by turning the zebras, which you've already set, you wait till you start seeing zebras on the white card. And then you can also check your waveform monitor. Uh, to see that the white card is falling at the 90% IRE level. So it's really as simple as that. Uh, this is uh, shooting in uh, standard 5 or Rec. 709 type gamma curve. So 90% white is 90 IRE. And then to do white balance, you just turn the white card over to the gray side. And you, um, on the side here on the white balance, since you got a preset and A or B, these are just memory slots for custom white balance values, so it doesn't really matter what you put it on. Uh, we put it on B. And then you just go to the front of the camera and press the white balance set. And then it, while it's pointing at the gray card, it'll give you a custom white balance. And believe it or not, you're almost done. The only thing left to do is compose your picture and put it in focus. Now this is where the user, uh, the signable button 3 comes in, because if you press that, uh, three times, uh, two times, you can really zoom in. And then you can adjust where the, the area of the frame that you're looking at. So here we're going to adjust it onto the eye. And then using the, the manual focus, you can really get a nice critical focus. And then once that's done, um, we're just, I'm just going to back out of the, the magnification here in a second. And there's our image. And I can frame it up a little bit and we are ready to record after all that believe it or not that was 45 steps and um, this is for shooting in custom mode standard 5 and uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and record a little bit of footage and then I'll play that at the end and so I hope you found this helpful this was just kind of a quick and dirty setup of the FS7 
setting it up basically using the default settings that it has and that mode is actually a good run and gun uh, what you see is what you get set up and it allows you to get a really pretty good shot so i hope you found this helpful and have a great day